Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we're going to be taking a look at the Thortec Plus, well it's the Thortec Thunderbolt Plus 1200 watt power supply. Now, this is the third power supply video that I'm going to be uploading this week, so it's the last in the trilogy this week. But the thing is, is we saved this one till last because it's, a, it's very, very uh, unusual. And I don't mean the features and stuff. I mean what happened when we tested it uh, and our thoughts on it. Uh, and this really, this power supply is the reason I, I normally, this type of thing wouldn't have gone live. I wouldn't have bothered with it. Um, essentially I'm using, going to use this video to try and educate you all on why you should always try and get a good quality power supply from a brand that you know and trust because um, basically you need to sit and watch this video we'll look at some of the features and stuff on it now I'm not going to mess around with the actual unboxing and stuff too much because Basically, this unit isn't very good, and I want to show you uh, th this and talk about some of the other stuff to explain why. Again, you sh you know, what I mean, you should always buy that little bit extra. Now, the thing with this unit, really, as you'll see in a second in the next video, it's got um, a display readout. Now, any of the regulars will know that I've actually already used this power supply in in a in a video previously when I reviewed the STH10 case from case labs this was the power supply that was in there and it was powering um four seven nine seventies and i was it was basically my way of testing this front panel um but then when i spoke to james about the unit he was basically like no stop using it let me send you this video and that's the reason why i'm making this video for you today but anyway the display readout gives you a chance to be able to look at the voltages the temperatures the fan speeds all kinds of things. Now the display itself does slightly overread, but it works and it's something quite flashy and different. Now I think that th this display will be the reason why most people will buy it uh, because it's like I said, it's something different, it's something to play with on the front of the case, kind of gives the case a kind of different feel. But that's another reason why I wanted to stress why um, you you need to kind of go careful with what you buy. Now, when we actually look at the unit itself, I'll take it out and I'll give you a quick look. It is modular to an extent. I'm just going to bring it up to the camera so I can actually show you. Now, power supply, you know, there's nothing kind of overly different about it. The braid was uh, crap, and I do mean properly crap. It's properly thin and horrible. You can see right through it. The 24 pin cable braid was probably the best bit on there. I, I didn't actually think that was too bad. You can see the modular bit there. Now, one thing I will say is from my experience, oh, I need to turn my screen back around. From my experience with power supplies, this is 1200 watt and I was instantly worried because it's normal ATX size, it's 160 mil length. Um, so to get 1200 watt in something this small, like I said, I was a bit like, it feels really small, Jim. And he was like, yeah. Uh, but anyway, what I'm going to do is, uh, like I said, we've had a, a very quick look at this unit. We've had a look at the display. You can see the display better in the next section of the video. Now, next section of the video was done by James. And this is also a way that we can kind of show you our power supply tester. So anyway, we'll, we'll break onto that. This was filmed by James. Uh, when he was testing the unit himself and then we'll come back to me and we'll talk about the uh, like the kind of overall thoughts of the power supply and then we need to kind of expand on the, the, the bad points and try and explain why. Hi guys, um, this is Jim and I do most of the power supply testing for Overclock 3D. As Tom's probably mentioned, uh, we're going to be looking at the Thortec Thunderbolt plus 1200 watt. Um, you'll have to excuse me because my camera is nowhere near as good as Tom's um, but here we go for pan out you can see the Fortec um, currently plugged into the equipment uh, there it is there chugging away um, and basically at the moment if I just switch over the display uh, right we're putting just under a thousand watt load on it so you know I'm not stressing it out too much because it is a 1200 watt power supply 
um, and on the Thortec display uh, we're reporting roughly the same just under a thousand watt load um, in terms of voltages though the Thortec reports a 12 12.4 to 12.3 volt output whereas on our power supply tester we're seeing around about 12 volts so it's not bad but not exactly what's being displayed on the, uh, the display there um, and the 3.3 volt rail Thortec is saying at 3.3 volts pretty much whereas we're down at 3.24 um, same goes for the 5 volt rail which is showing at 5.1618 something like that um, and 5.02 um, on our tester um, so basically the, the display is over reading slightly but nothing too much to worry about um, as the, the voltages are still in check um, unfortunately though if we look up here that my friends is the ripple coming out of the 12 volt rail now that should be somewhere under 120 millivolts but we're getting somewhere close to 280 300 through that so that is pretty damn crap if I have to say um, especially considering the unit isn't actually at full capacity um, now what I can do is bump up the output just a little bit more and we'll see what happens oh now if you look at that the power supply is basically having a fit right now I don't know if you can hear that noise but it sounds like it's just about to blow up on me uh, so let's try it, oh no it's just failed so there you go uh, I think we better switch that off now before it starts killing stuff Right then peeps, now, as I have explained to you all in the past, the, um, the, about the ripple. Now, as you can see on the oscilloscope, the ripple was massive. It was kind of almost touching the top and bottom of that, uh, that screen. Now, when, as Jim said, it should have been much, much smaller. I mean, it's not unusual for us to kind of be getting like 20, 30, 40, um, uh, kind of you know difference whereas with, with that we were getting kind of 280 well over 310 so there was the, the 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 ripple on this unit is horrific and that ripple is what kills components that is one of the reasons why when I said to Jim that I was testing it with all that kit because I was basically trying to load it and I what I was doing in the STH10 is I had all the cards in there I knew what power that was pulling from an AX1200 watt so I was basically testing the screen to see the readout on what the screen was telling me and then what why wattage meter from the wall was telling me because they should roughly be the same and they were kind of within about 50 to 75 watts within each other this was saying it was pulling uh, a lot less than what the wall was saying which they should have, have been the same because that's what yeah so they should have been saying the same thing they weren't as you could see within with the testing it was slightly over reading the volts as well that doesn't really matter because it's not too much of a problem for the end user it was just something that we wanted to test um, on one of the buttons on it actually there's a button for the fan uh, so you can actually turn the fan up um, but it, because of the temperature meter temperature probe in the unit it reads out on the display as well turning the fan up made no difference whatsoever so the fans completely useless or the probe just doesn't work but the probe just does go up and down when it's loaded it's just turning the fan up literally made no difference whatsoever to the the overall kind of um, temperature result so whether that's a heat sink issue or whatever we don't know but obviously at a thousand watts it was going completely and utterly spastic it's rated at 1200 watts um, we couldn't get it to run 1200 watts properly at all um, and that was without like cross loading or anything like that that was just a straight 1200 watt pull um, it just kept shutting down it kept going nuts now 
I know there's going to be people out there, either people that have worked in PR and marketing before, or maybe even people from Fortech, are going to be saying it's a faulty unit. Well, you'd think that, wouldn't you? We thought that too. But the thing is, is generally when we go to a power supply manufacturer, what happens is we tell them it's crap and then we get an engineering sample, which is basically what we would call a tweaked unit. You can tell sometimes that a unit comes, you get a second unit and you can have a look inside and you can see differences. You can, you can tell that they've basically beefed bits up to try and get it through our testing. So quite sneakily, and we couldn't find one in the UK, so we had some, ended up having to buy one um, from Europe. We bought one, we had it sent to a forum member that we, we know really, really well in Europe. Then we basically had it shipped over to us in the UK. We tested it again. So there was no chance of us getting one from the same batch unless they really didn't make very many of them. We tested the second unit and it was exactly the same. So it wasn't like ours was a one-off. The second unit come, it was, it, it was like they were twins. It was like they'd literally been made from the exact same person in the factory. So the, the moral of this story is, guys, don't be fooled by a cheap power supply with bling bits that looks like it's got, you know, too much to offer. It probably has. When it comes to things like this, stick to brands that you know and trust. Now, we could be talking any number of brands out there, but I'll name you the ones that I would tend to stick with. Just a few to pick, pick, you know, to pick a few numbers out for you. Corsair, Seasonic, um, Cooler Master would do make some good power supplies as well. Um, let me think. Uh, Enamax, obviously, we've said Seasonic. Um, I don't want to go too far more adrift than that really. I'm thinking about the other ones around the office that I've got. NZXT, the Hale uh, 90 is a really, really good power supply. We've said um, Seasonic. I'm literally just kind of trying to check around with the ones that I've had and used and stuff in the past that I, I would say would be good. But they would be my, my main few. I would stick within that kind of, those ones at the moment. Silver Power are making some amazing power supplies at the moment as well, as we've seen before, and they, they are well priced, but still um, perform really well. But stick within th those kind of boundaries. I'm not gonna start naming companies to avoid because that just opens up a whole hell. If I've not mentioned them, I've not mentioned them for a specific reason. Um, so yes, uh, this, like I said, this is the reason why a, you need to uh, make sure you stick with a decent brand. And B, this is a reason why you can't test a power supply with a multimeter. It just, it doesn't give you any insight into what's going on inside whatsoever. It's one of the reasons why we either test something completely or we just do an overview. Obviously at the beginning of the week, we did a full review with the Silver Power. Then we did just an overview with the GS800. Um, because if you can't do it properly, don't do it at all. But anyway, um, essentially this power supply is now going in the bin. I am never going to be connecting this up to uh, anything electrical ever again. I wouldn't even use this as like a, a, a test system or anything like that. I'm literally going to cut all the cables off and it's going to the tip. Um, so, Many of you say I never review a bad thing. This was so bad I had to. Obviously I've not got a massive amount of time to keep pumping out videos of you know mediocre stuff all the time. It's just a complete and utter waste of my time. But this was so spectacularly bad I wanted to tell you to avoid it. So the Thortec Thunderbolt Plus 1200 watt. Avoid it like the bubonic plague. Do not touch it with a barge pole. Don't touch it with your mate's barge pole. To be perfectly honest with you, I wouldn't even want it in the same house as me. I can't wait to get this skipped. Um, so basically, the best advice you'd ever get is don't buy anything, or definitely do not buy this. Um, but I would be very cautious about anything that uh, Thortec were to sell. Um, so yeah, avoid them like the plague, guys. But this is Tiny Tom Logan with this very different video compared to what we would normally do out.